Good morning. So before we start, I wonder if you've looked at the weather forecast. When you go home this afternoon, please know where your snow shovels are. False Just news, false news. <laughs> Oh, I totally hope it is. I totally hope it is. Oh, I'm pretty sure this isn't scheduled till after Halloween, but apparently I'm not the one in charge, so. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, uh, please respond to the stewardship invitation. Last week, um, invitations were either emailed or mailed, or you picked something up here in an envelope. Even if your answer is, I can't do anything else, would you please fill in the piece of paper and send it to the church, bring it to the church? If you are just saying that I'm doing all I can, let me tell you all you can is enough, but please fill in the piece of paper and send it back to us so that we know who's getting the message and we, we know what's going on. Um, yesterday, we had an under the stage cleaning. I'm sure we should have had a theme song, but, and I hid, so I didn't do anything with it, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> I understand that about 90% of the stuff that was under the stage is now no longer under the stage. And let me tell you, that is amazing. The things that we've been hanging on to for years and years and years that we are now recognizing we don't need and a clean sweep. So thank you to everyone who came to do that yesterday morning. Last week we started um, sort of an October food drive for peanut butter and cereal. And um, our box got filled last week with about 20 different items. Was it 20? Yeah, somewhere around about there. Um, it is fuller this week. It's great. So if we continue to remember to bring, if we can, peanut butter and cereal for the food bank, that would be most helpful. The reason I ducked out of the stage cleaning, there really was a good excuse, is that I spent um, four hours yesterday with the general counsel of the United Church as a commissioner making decisions for the church. So that's what I did yesterday morning. Really quite interesting. And one of the topics we thought was going to be really hot and heavy passed without a murmur, like go figure. And then in the afternoon, I went up to Edmonton and remember the, the regional gathering that we had here in May and we had a celebration of ministry. Well, there were some people who the church did not get its act together and they were not confirmed in enough time to be celebrated at that ministry. So we did it yesterday. So I went up to Edmonton and we celebrated two ordinations and a di um, designated lay minister coming into their ministry and ready to work in the church. And it was great. We begin with the lighting of the Christ candle. This light that reminds us of God's presence around us, among us, within us. And from this surrounding, grounding presence of the holy, we light an orange candle for healing. A rainbow candle for welcome. Let us take a moment of silence as we prepare to celebrate God's presence in our community.
Welcome to this place where we strive to be a place where all of God's people are welcome, where we work hard to be a place that is safe and feels like home. You are welcome. Let's tell the stories of the things God has done, mighty acts of power and love throughout history. Let's remember how much God loves us, all of us, and celebrate the care God continues to show to all of creation. I invite you to join your hearts and your voices with mine in our opening prayer. We live in a time of great unrest. It is hard to find peace in the world or in our hearts. In these anxious times, we turn to you, O God, to ground us, to guide us, to comfort us. It is hard to find peace in the world or in our hearts. As we yearn to see your presence in the world, as we look around to find ways of being peace in the world, we gather our hearts together. We share our faith and our hopes with each other, and we come to still ourselves to be with you. May this time of worship Help us on the road to peace in the world and in our hearts. Amen. 
We speak of our faith lived out in the world. We speak of our role as a community of faith of God. And today we hear a part of the song of faith of the United Church of Canada that speaks to us of the responsibilities that we have as God's loving community, following the love and life of Jesus in the world. Good morning. In love, the one eternal God seeks relationship. So God creates the universe and with it the possibility of being and relating. God tends the universe, mending the broken and reconciling the estranged. God enlivens the universe, guiding all things toward harmony with their source. God forgives and calls all of us to confess our fears and failings with honesty and humility. God reconciles and calls us to repent the part we have played in damaging our world, ourselves, and each other. God transforms and calls us to protect the vulnerable, to pray for deliverance from evil, to work with God for the healing of the world, that all might have abundant life. Our theme today is Peace Sunday. It's a heavy topic, but the United Church of Canada has never run away from God and the challenges that the Holy believes we have the strength to face. So, I invite you to breathe deeply so that the love of God will inspire us to be bold and daring enough to bring peace into the world. On Tuesday this week, a small group of people joined me in a vigil with prayers of peace for Israel and Gaza. The situation that began on the 7th of October is just two weeks ago is horrific. In our time together, we heard prayers from many other church organizations and partnerships, naming the need for help and support, naming that this is an atrocious war making targets of innocent people, naming that we just don't know what to do. This is not the first time that war has torn the world apart. So many times human beings just do not seem to be able to figure out how to solve conflicts without fighting. So many times those who are in conflict are not directly involved in the war. They are away from the death and destruction, plotting and planning. There are other conflicts happening in the world now and some have been so much longer than two weeks and we don't know what to do. Today's portion from A Song of Faith reminds us that God wants to tend and mend the universe, to bring broken people and places together, to create strong and long relationships that intertwine and hold each other up, hold each other together. It reminds us that we have a role to play in that, to be aware of our fears and mistakes, to be honest and humble. We need to recognize when we say and do things that damage worlds and relationships because it doesn't take much to start a fight or to grow it bigger. We need to protect those who can't protect themselves. We need to be partners in healing and creating peace. Where are we doing that today? Who are we protecting? Are we creating damage or healing? God calls us to get along. God calls us to heal. God calls us to understand that peace takes work to happen. And we have the tools and the heart to make it so. <laughs>
Please join your hearts with mine and hear these words of the prayer of awareness. Holy One, today we gather on Peace Sunday, very aware that the world is not a peaceful place for so many of your people. We are seeing people at their worst, disregarding the value of any lives but their own, using others as commodities to gain power, inflicting hunger, pain, and suffering for their own benefit. It is easy to see all of this from a distance. It is easy to switch it off because it is so hard to see. Yet, if we are to be honest, there are times in our lives, even without the catastrophic violence, when we put ourselves above others, when our privilege is maintained at the cost of another's peace, when we disregard someone else's hunger and need for healing because it's hard to hear and hard to watch. Forgive us, God. Infuse us with the humility and honesty we need to admit that we have benefited from decisions and circumstances that have damaged other people and places. Inspire us with the will to be part of conversations and journeys that can repair damage done to the world and its peoples, near and far. Transform us with the passion to protect the vulnerable, help the healing, the hurting, to be brave enough to give and share of ourselves so that all may have abundant life and live with peace. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Through our dark valleys, as promised, God is right beside us, reminding us that we have strength, we have courage, we can bring justice to those who need it. Through all the challenges and changes of life, God is with us. That doesn't change. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture is from Exodus 33, verses 12 to 23 from the message. Moses pleads with God. Moses said to God, look, you tell me, lead this people, but you don't let me know whom you're going to send with me. You tell me, I know you well and you are special to me. If I am so special to you, let me in on your plans. That way, I will continue being special to you. Don't forget, this is your people, your responsibility. God said, my presence will go with you. I'll see the journey to the end. Moses said, if your presence doesn't take the lead here, call this trip off right now. 
How else will it be known that you're with me in this, with me and your people? Are you traveling with us or not? How else will we know that we're special, I and your people, among all other people on this planet Earth? And God said to Moses, All right, just as you say, this also I will do, for I know you well, and you are special to me. I know you by name. Moses said, Please, let me see your glory. God said, I will make my goodness pass right in front of you. I'll call out the name God right before you. I'll treat well whomever I want to treat well, and I will be kind to whomever I want to be kind. God continued, but you may not see my face. No one can see me and live. God said, look, here is a place right beside me. Put yourself on this rock. When my glory passes by, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I've passed by. Then I'll take my hand away and you'll see my back, but you won't see my face. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 1 to 10, following good faith from the Inclusive Bible. From Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the people of the church in Thessalonica who belong to Abba God and our Savior Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be yours. We always thank God for all of you and remember in our prayers. We call to mind before our God and Creator how you are providing your faith by your actions, laboring in love, and showing constancy of hope in our Savior, Jesus Christ. We know, sisters, brothers, beloved of God, that you have been chosen. Our preaching of the gospel was not a mere matter of words it was done in the power of the Holy Spirit and with complete conviction. You know very well the sort of life we led when we were with you, which was for your sake. You in turn followed the example set by us and by Jesus, receiving the word despite great trials with the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. In this way, you have become a model of all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The word of Christ has been resounding from you, and not only in Macedonia and Achaia, the news of your faith in God is celebrated everywhere, which makes it unnecessary for us to say anything more. They themselves report to us what kind of reception we had among you, how you turned from idols to God, to be faithful witnesses of the living and true God, and to await the appearance from heaven of Jesus, the only begotten, who God raised from the dead and who is the one who will deliver us from the wrath to come. Scripture is our song for the journey the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire, that we might wrestle a holy revelation for our time and place from the human experiences and cultural assumptions of another era. God calls us to be doers of the word and not hearers only.
Jesus was pretty feisty this morning, wasn't he? (laughs) The United Church of Canada partners with many groups, reaching out to find commonalities, similar ways of speaking with and about God. And we acknowledge that there are many different ways of meeting the holy in the world. We meet people with the goal of bringing care and justice to the world. We look to the scriptures to guide us, to show us where God's love is needed in the world, and then we do our best to be that presence. We are not naive. We know that the world has poverty and hunger, violence and war, discrimination and oppression. We know that we can't wave a magic wand and fix it all. If we could, if God would, then the issues wouldn't be there, would they? In our oldest faith stories, we are told that humans chose to slip away from a protected place into a world of adventure. They chose to travel roads that held danger and stumbling blocks. They chose to have a will that could follow God's way or try something new. And parent God let them go. Knowing that some of the choices made would create chaos instead of peace, God committed to walk with them in their choices. In Exodus, we see Moses at a loss for what happens next. He doubts the journey because he can't see the plan. This most faithful man wants something concrete to hang on to. God says, have faith. You know I'm with you. Trust me, I'll travel with you. God doesn't say that a flash sighting will make everyone believe, nor is there a promise of that happening. But God says, if you look at the right time and place, you will know that I have been there. On what we know to be a long, long journey, Moses had moments of doubts and asked for proof of the holy. I think God said, think of me, search for me, I am there. Through the journey, Moses spoke to God a lot and received guidance and assurance and was able to get the people where they needed to be. Do we do that? Do we speak to God a lot? Do we listen for the next step of the journey or are we rushing to get to the end? Have we looked back and realized that God has been with us all the way? How will God get us to where we are supposed to be if we won't listen and change how we journey together in the world? Hundreds of years later, Paul wrote to the people of Thessalonica, giving them thanks for their hospitality, for their willingness to listen to God's, Jesus' words, and for their openness to living in a way that was a model of faithfulness. He said that their actions had been noticed as an example for other communities of faith to follow. As our community of faith, we find ourselves in a place where we need to look at how we are perceived to be living God's word in the world. In this world that fights so easily, how can we sow examples and seeds of peace that others will be inspired to follow? Well, we can build relationships and partnerships. We can work with people from other denominations to feed, clothe, and shelter people in need. We can offer words of welcome. We can stand against injustice by refusing to engage in it. In the last week, we, the United Church of Canada, and through me and my work with the Northern Spirit Region, the United Church of Camrose, have encouraged folk to gather in prayer for those impacted by war. The United Church of Canada is a member of the Canadian Council of Churches, And as such, we share a determination that peace is the core to the mission and identity of all member churches and the heart of ecumenism. 
partnering across denominational lines for the sake of humanity. In their Principles of Peace adopted in 2018, the members of the Canadian Council of Churches agreed that peace exists where there are right relationships between God, humanity, and all creation. That peace building and justice making are necessary and indivisible imperatives that guide the church's thinking and action. Peacemaking is the vocation of Christians, a testimony of life, a witness to the world not only through what we say, but how we act and how we live. That there can be no peace without justice. That engaging in war constitutes a failure, and we must take up the responsibility to prevent conflicts and to protect people. Nothing and no one is excluded from God's vision of peace. It includes all nations, cultures, and peoples, the whole inhabited earth, indeed the whole cosmos. The quest for peace is at the heart of ecumenism and the shared path of reconciliation, of walking one another home. Peace belongs to everyone. Peace is God's wish for this complicated world that was created in love. We are to be peacemakers, calling for justice, offering healing and hope in all that we do in the world. May it be so. On a day when we hope for peace in the world, we surely must acknowledge that the best way for that to happen is for God's people to share and care whenever and however they can. How each of us offers ourselves for God's word is different. Some of us may offer prayer. 
sending messages of hope out into the world, refocusing our attitudes towards God's wish for a world of inclusion and loving. Some of us can offer time and talent. We work together in teams with others, providing food, listening to stories, joining to find ways to send acceptance and support into God's world. Some of us can offer treasure. We donate directly to causes close to our heart to enable the best help to be provided. We donate to our church, knowing that what we offer is carefully used for the benefit of our world community, in church, and beyond. Whatever you can offer, joined with all the others who offer their best, know that you can make a difference in God's world. From God we receive, back to God we give, with each other we share, and by this we live. From God we receive, back to God we give, with each other we share, and by this we live. From God we receive, back to God we give, with each other we share, and by this we live. In our pastoral prayers, we name those places and people who need to know that they are seen and heard. We name where the world has challenges, where people need hope. We offer care through our words and commit to making our actions mirror the love of God in our lives. As we join our hearts together in prayer today, let us watch as the light of hope shines into this time and this place, making a way for peace to come into the world. Today, I invite us to think particularly about God's people who are hurting, those caught up in a terrible war in Israel and Gaza, those who continue to fight for freedom in Ukraine, those who have lost their homes in Afghanistan, those who are now experiencing a violation of their human rights, who are being targeted with anti-Semitism, discrimination, and unfounded anger. I invite us to think about how we offer peace in our church, in our community. Holy One, our hearts cannot possibly hurt as much as yours these days. Your people have lost their way. Your people are killing each other. Your people are standing aside. Your people are hurting. Your people are dying. Somehow, the evil of power has corrupted leaders, has hardened hearts, has discarded diversity, has named people as commodities to be bartered for gain. Our hearts cannot possibly hurt as much as yours these days. We offer our prayers to your hurting heart. We pray that your voice will ease its way into hard hearts. We pray that your passion for justice for the least will find a way to bring peace. We pray that the memory of crowds punishing the innocent will still those who find themselves caught up in frenzied violence. We pray that ways will be found, quickly found, to feed, clothe, and shelter the homeless, that neighbors will find compassion for those victims of others' greed and violence. We pray that your love will support and hold those who grieve, who hurt, who feel helpless, who have lost hope. 
Give us the courage to resist the evil. Give us the courage to push for justice. Give us the courage to share what we have with those who have lost so much. Give us the courage to pick love. To treat others in the same way we want to be treated. To reach out and be your people who live our bold discipleship, our daring justice, grounded in deep spirituality that brings us closer to you. May our actions and choices heal broken hearts. May we bring to life the loving you need for your world. Amen. <coughs> Take a deep breath. Imagine a world where there is no fighting, where differences are respected and compromise is possible, where people, young and old, will support each other. May the love of God, the teaching of Jesus, and the strength of the Holy Spirit inspire us all to make that world come true. Amen. Spirit of God, bring us healing. May the Spirit of God always make us welcome. May the light of Christ that shines into all of the corners of the earth, showing us where we are and where we are meant to be, guide us there. And may we know that God is indeed with us wherever we go. Amen. <laughs>